will be your leader of the Green Party, incumbent member to the right. Welcome, sir. Next, I'd like to welcome Bryce Kasman, and he candidate for us. representing the BC Liberal Party. We will begin this debate by offering each of the candidates an uninterrupted five-minute segment in which they will introduce themselves and speak to why they feel they would be the best choice for voters in this riding. The order of responses has been selected by a random draw. After the introductions have to a focused questioning portion of the debate. The questions that our candidates will answer this evening were written collaboratively by members of the University of Victoria Student Society. These questions have been grouped into three broad categories. Those categories are number one, post-secondary education, number two, jobs in the economy, and number three, social services. Each of these three segments will begin with a general question put to all three candidates in a random order. They will each be given three minutes to respond. Then we will move to what we call cyclical debate, control debate. That consists of three questions, focused questions put randomly to a candidate with another candidate randomly assigned a chance to respond. The initial response time will be two minutes. The rebuttal time will be capped at 90 seconds. Now, in the interests of fair debate and in the interests of discouraging personal attacks against any of the candidates or any of the parties, I, as the moderator, in my judgment, uh, can reserve the opportunity to grant an extra 60 second rebuttal for anybody who might need to respond directly to anything that has been said about them. For example, if, say, the NDP candidate is talking with the Green candidate and the BC Liberal Party or the BC Liberal candidate is mentioned, that would mean that there would be an opportunity generated for Alex Dutton, the Liberal candidate, to respond. Just as an example, in the interests of fairness. My job is to politely but firmly remind the candidates not to exceed their allotted time. Uh, once each of our three general topics has been exhausted, each candidate will be permitted five minutes to make a closing statement. That order also randomly chosen. Following closing statements, we will use the remainder of our time to take questions from you, the audience. We ask that any questions directed at the candidates be respectful and not exceed 15 seconds in length. If either of those conditions are not met, the question will not be taken, and we will move to the next person in line. Now that we have all that out of the way, I would like to say thank you very much, all of you, for coming here. And without further ado, I would like to introduce the first candidate that we selected before we started this by grand appointment, a candidate that will be delivering their introduction first. That is candidate two, Bryce Casabet. Go ahead, sir. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. My name is Bryce. I am running in the riding of Oak Bay Gordon Head for the BC NDP. Some of you may know me as the former BC conservation officer who did uh, was in the BC media for my decision regarding two bear cubs. For those of you who don't know uh, the other part of my background and story, I served for six years in the Canadian Forces uh, with the military police, and I was also attached to an infantry unit uh, overseas. I've served in Afghanistan as well as here abroad in various um, emergency assistance planning roles. Coming back from overseas, I joined the BC Public Service as a conservation officer uh, where I served for two years. And I currently work as a public servant with the Ministry of Forest and I'm on political leave to seek this run for office. <coughs> I'm here because I believe there is a change needed in this province. I believe that we need to build a better BC for all of our society here. We need a government that works for our people, that has a capacity to care for the citizens in this province. A government that is focused not just on corporations and the wealthy, but on the average citizen. I'm looking for your support and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. Candidates are not required to take the entire uh, five minutes that they've been allotted. You're welcome to continue, sir. It's your five minutes to use as you see fit. If not, you can relinquish it and we'll, we'll move on to the next person. All right, so we will move on now. A five minute introduction to our next candidate, will be Alex Duffy, chosen by a grand Thank you, Adam. Thank you so much, candidates, for being here today. <coughs> 
My name is Alex Dutton, and I'm proud to be the BC Liberal candidate in Oak Bay Gordon. I was born right here in the riding. I was born at Royal Jubilee Hospital, where my father chose to work in a public system for his entire medical career. And it was the same place that we shared the last few laughs with my mother before she passed away from cancer. I grew up right here. I swam, I learned to swim at Oak Bay Rec, I played rugby at Windsor Park, I played community field hockey at UVic. And I remember in 1994, one of the most, at the time, devastating things in my life happened. My sister, my older sister, graduated from high school and told me she couldn't stay in British Columbia because there was nothing available for her here. There were no opportunities. And she left. She moved to Toronto. And she went to school there. And in 1999, I hoped maybe she was going to come back. And no, she again had to tell me that she wasn't coming back to British Columbia, even though she wanted to, because there were no opportunities for her here. And that was the beginning of how I became involved in politics. In 2001, I worked on a DC Liberal campaign, and I got hired, and I made coffee, and I photocopied, and it was incredible. And I'm proud to say that in 2011, after huge work that's been done by this party, and the huge increase in economic development and jobs, my sister was able to come back to British Columbia. And she was able to come back here because the economy is doing well. And she works in the tech sector, and that is something that we can be extremely proud of. For the last six years, I've been practicing law in Victoria. I've been coaching debating. I've been volunteering in various organizations. I've been training for races. I've been doing hill repeats up Mount Dub. I've been put to shame by some of the senior citizens working out at uh, Gordon Head Rec, who I have to say are an inspiration. And when it came time to look at this election, I became involved again, because I'm increasingly concerned about the polarization, the all or nothing attitude that we see in the debate about environment, the environment, and the economy. I grew up as a younger British Columbian, I can still say that, I think, caring about the environment. I helped implement the recycle program at my school. We bugged our parents to turn off the lights. The environment is not something that is foreign to me, and it's not something that is ever far from top of mind. But I've been door knocking since December, and there are a number of people in this community who want to have a conversation about other things in the environment. They too want to protect the environment, and they too believe that in order to have a sustainable economy, you need to have a sustainable environment. But they also want to talk about things like healthcare. And they want to know that despite having the best cancer outcomes in Canada, that when their parent needs the system and needs to have the excellent and compassionate care that was provided to my mother, that that system is going to be there for them. And that is only possible with a strong economy. And that is only possible planning and prudence and responsibility. To make a series of unfunded promises, the question you have to ask yourself is, are you going to pay for it, or are you going to make your children pay for it? That is the only question. All of these things, what we're going to talk about over the next two hours, and I'm going to tell you about the record of the BC Liberal Government. They're all possible because of a strong and diversified economy. We are now the envy of every province in Canada. I believe that governments should help people reach their potential on their terms, and that to do that in a responsible and strategic way has been what the BC Liberal governments have done. I am proud to be running as the BC Liberal candidate <coughs> in Oak Bay Gordon Head, and I look forward to speaking with you over the next two hours and over the next 48 days to earn your vote. Thank you, Alex Sutton. Now, if I could introduce the segment to you, Andrew Weaver. Uh, thank you. And thank you to the UPS and the UBSS for hosting the event today. It's so important that we engage our, our youth in our democratic institutions because, frankly, uh, it's far too many decisions are being made today that have the best interests of the decision makers, first and foremost, rather than the next generation who will live the consequences 
of the decisions being made. So my name is Andrew Weaver. I'm the MLA, the sitting MLA for Oak Bay Gordon Head, and the leader of the BC Green Party. My history is that I was born in Victoria, actually at the same Jubilee Hospital as, as my colleague uh, Alex there, but a few years prior to her. Uh, and <laughs> my parents uh, live in Victoria. My father was a professor at the university here. My mother went to the University of Victoria. My sister went to the University of Victoria. I went to the University of Victoria. My daughter is at the University of Victoria. My mother went to the University of Victoria. I met my wife at the University of Victoria. And I have been a professor at the University of Victoria since 1992. My wife is also from Victoria, and we came back to Victoria from Montreal, where I was faculty at McGill, because we felt that first and foremost, our top priority was to have a family that grew up in a beautiful province that we were born into and have, be surrounded by grandparents. And so we've been very, uh, very uh, blessed to have our children grow up in a, in, a, in a loving family environment with both sets of grandparents here. You know, I went to high school in the riding. My daughter went to a different high school in the riding. I graduated from Oak Bay in 1979. My son graduated from a different high school in the riding. I grew up in the Oak Bay part of the riding. I too played rugby at Windsor Park with Oak Bay High and, and, and the University of Victoria after that. And I live now in Gordon Head and have coached soccer there for many, many years. This is my home. This is where I was born. This is where I grew up. This is where my children were born. This is where my wife was born. And this is part of who we are, the riding of Oak Bay, Gordon Head. It has been a distinct honor for the last four years to serve the people of Oak Bay, Gordon Head in the legislature. And I would put my record up against any other MLAs to show that I have worked for you, people of Oak Bay Gordon Head, and not only you, but for so many other British Columbians who have felt left out of the political system, who felt they had no voice in the dysfunctional environment that is our legislature, where we have two parties who've literally been fighting the same battles since the early 1990s. In fact, frankly, some of those MLAs have been in the legislature since the 1990s, and it's time for a change. We have a really exciting platform that's being built and being slowly released as the BC Green Party. Today I had the distinct honor of releasing our new economy platform in Vancouver where we talked about in, uh, our, our plans to, to engage the tech sector, the biomedical sector, the biotech sector in a way that actually builds on our strengths. Now the BC Liberals approach to the tech sector is to fund those who already have the money to give $100 million to venture cap firms that may or may not invest in BC. I'm not sure what the BC NDP plan is because they haven't really come out with a strong plan. The BC Green plan is to recognize that innovation starts at the lab bench. Innovation starts in the dorm. And what we announced today is measures to actually incentivize those who have the ideas to build on existing programs that the federal government puts forward, to, to match those programs, to ensure that they have money to bring the knowledge that they're developing to the marketplace. It's been a beginning of a journey for me. If you'd asked me five years ago if I thought I would actually ever end up being an MLA, I would have said to you no. But the reason why I ran five years is that I could no longer look my students in the face at the University of Victoria. I could no longer look to them on the issue of climate change that I taught for many years and say to them when they ask, what can we do? And I would say that there's several things. One is, you know, you use your, your pocketbook to guide the market, and two is get engaged in our democratic institutions. And they would say to me, but all politicians are corrupt. They're all the same. They're in it for themselves. They just want the pensions. And I would say, no, that's not true. And if you don't like who's running, stand up as a matter of principle and run yourself. And they would say, no, 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 it's not going to do it. And I'm giving that lecture, actually, again, this week at the University of Victoria in the, in the EOS 365. And it's the same lecture I've given for, for many years. It's a lecture where after enough, I'm giving it enough times, I realize that I need to take a look in the mirror. If I truly want to practice what I preach, I should put my name forward. And I put my name forward for a party that had never elected anyone before in any riding, in any province in Canada, as a point of principle. And it's been a distinct honor for four years, and I have seen the support of our party surge across the province as we have announced candidate after candidate with exceptional credentials, who, like me, are standing up not so much for the political career of politics, but because they want to reclaim our democracy for the people of British Columbia, because first and foremost, we are elected to serve you, the people, not our corporate donors, not our big labor union funders, but the people of British Columbia, and that is not happening in the legislature today. Thank you.
already mentioned specifically, would you like a 60 second chance to respond to that, Alex, or would you like to respond to those questions in the fullness of the debate? Both well, on the fullness of the debate. Okay, perfect. All right, let's move on to our first topic, post-secondary education. We have a broad question that we will put to all three of our candidates in a random order. We then have targeted questions that we will do afterwards. We begin with a broad question that we will ask all three candidates. Each will be given three minutes to respond. The first question is, in your opinion, what do you think are the most effective policy measures to make post-secondary education more accessible? Our random draw has candidate three, Alex Dutton, as our first responder to that. You have three minutes. So I absolutely agree that post-secondary education is an essential thing. We know that in the coming years, the two-thirds of the one million new jobs that will be opened by 2025 will require post-secondary education. In order to keep that education accessible, the BC Liberal government has done things like cap tuition at 2%. It's done things like, most recently, lower the interest rate from prime plus 2.5 to prime. But that's not enough. And I know that as a younger candidate up here, I can speak personally about the accessibility of post-secondary education. And I can tell you that there are more innovative ways that we can go ahead and we can make sure that every student in this province has the access to the more than 22 public colleges and universities that are available. Specifically, from from the vantage point of developing the economy and making sure that those post-secondary degrees are well marketed and well used, we know that investment in specific areas like tech, like math, like engineering are going to be a priority. But it's also important that we make sure that, that people are able to go and serve all over the province. And that's why programs like the BC Loan Forgiveness that allows physicians and lawyers and other professionals to go out to learn potentially here at UVic and go out and serve their community are also attractive ways to make sure that post-secondary education remains accessible and affordable. Thank you. Same question. Next we picked randomly. Uh, if we pick randomly here, it would be Andrew Weaver. Go ahead, sir. Uh, three minutes. Uh, three minutes, yes. There's uh, a number of issues facing post-secondary education, uh, student education um, in, in this province and in particular students. First and foremost, the issue of affordability is directly hitting students. Affordability is not so much, not only finding that, but it's also putting food on your plate. It is simply unacceptable that we have a food bank on campus that is heavily used by students of the University of Victoria. Why is that the case? The, why is that the case is because we've had a track record of this government over the last 17 years of putting their interests ahead of people's interests. You'll hear that this government is good for the economy. What this government is good for is their economy, their donors, their corporate lenders. It is not good for the average person. And the discrepancy between those who have and those who haven't has grown as a direct consequence of the choices made. So what would we do? We announced today $175 million over four years that would be put in to actually bringing, uh, making the issues that I outlined in terms of our new economy more accessible to students. We focused our entire platform on the new economy, on this generation, the generation of millennial students who are entering an economy that is no longer like it used to be for my parents, or even for me, where one job, one lifetime, and you would be protected from a new job forever. We're moving into a time when there's more automation, when there's more gig job, jobs, when we're going to be moving from job to job, and students need security. They need security by not, start, by not getting out into the workforce, hampered in the poverty trap of existing debt. How do you do that? Well, you introduce the concept of basic income, a concept which actually ensures that people have the income that they need to actually be, be a proactive in our citizenship. We know that the federal liberals have this as a policy. We know that PEI, Quebec, and Northern European countries are going, going this direction, and that is the direction the BC Greens will head through the introduction of initially pilot type studies, but merging into uh, more and more as we move forward. The reason we, when we talk about issues facing students, like poverty, like debt, the question we should be asking is not how do we get them into, out of debt, it's why are they in debt in the first place. That is the approach we take in each and every policy that we put forward, is we don't just think about the quick fix, we ask why are we there in the first place. For example, we'll talk about fentanyl, and it'll be the same thing there. The government approach is reactionary. It's always, we have a problem, let's fix it. I'm not sure what the NDP approach is, 
Our approach is say, what got us to the problem in the first place? And then let's actually go back and treat the reason why we got there. And it'll be like that in post-secondary education, through a housing platform that we'll announce, through our education platform, that you'll see is not putting post-secondary education in isolation from other aspects of education. Education doesn't stop at grade 12 or stop when you graduate. Education is a lifelong uh, learning process, and that is going to be the focus of our platform. Thank you. Same question, three minutes. Thanks, Adam. I'd just like to first uh, correct the record here. Uh, the NDP has spoken on the tech sector uh, investment, and I've encouraged both of my colleagues to uh, review our platform initiatives uh, on that matter. Uh, as far as education, I'm also happy to answer the question uh, of my colleague of how, how we got here and what the problem is. Tuition's out of control. It's too high. Students are paying for it out of their own pockets and incurring debt as a result. We need a properly funded education system, not, not just for the wealthy that can afford access to a quality education, but for all British Columbians. And I know this because I'm the only one on the panel currently paying for my tuition. So I'm in a doctoral program at Royal Roads, and it is expensive, and it is hard to raise a family. I've been fortunate enough to achieve government employment, uh, graduating out of my master's degree, but unlike many British Columbians who, who aren't uh, fortunate enough to get a good paying job, uh, I, even I still find it difficult to pay these t tuition bills. So we need a government that is looking out for all British Columbians, that is providing affordable education. We know that an educated population contributes to a better economy, a more sustainable economy. And that's what, that's what I'm here. I'm here to help build a better BC that looks out for the people that works for the people. 